Welcome to Excel with Mark and today we're going to be working through this intermediate Excel video and we're going to be looking at all sorts of different things from formatting and working with different formulas. So let's get straight into it and let's see what we can do here. So starting out with what we're going to be looking at and we finished our beginner one on looking at formatting and we're going to start this one with some more advanced formatting. We can see that we have the names of the different movies here and all the episodes as well in there. And we can see how many episodes and all the data here. But if we wanted to change this, for instance, and we change this to a green up here, and we can see that we have the bold names at the top, then what we can do with this as well, rather than having to then go over and individually do it, we can go into the Home tab up here, and we can go to the Format Painter on the clipboard, and we can click into it, and we can see that as we have that cell selected there, we now get these little marching ants that go around and what we can do is just drag that along now and what that does is that paints that along so it just copies the format across all of them different cells and it doesn't matter what's in the cell in terms of value wise it would just literally you know copy it over and then move it into whichever cells you put right so so that's just a great way of being able to use that and rather than let's like say having to do everything manually you now have the ability to just copy this over really quickly and it makes things easier for you. So once we've used the format pair, we can look at this further and we can start to move into more advanced editing techniques to make this stand out more. And we're going to look at the rating for this part here. And what we can do is just select all of this data using the control shift and down. And within the home tab once again, we have this little part here. And we can see that this now works on conditional formatting. And with this, you're going to get lots of things that say rules, and what you can do is set different rules up so that different things work based on what your rules would say to them. But for us, we're just going to work on this color scales one here. You can see when you go into these color scales at this point here that you get all these different colors and it starts to give you previews over on the left hand side there of what your data would look like. Um, where it can show you that obviously the higher ones get dark colors and the lighter ones go lighter. So for us, we'll just use this first one here that has the three colors. And once we've selected that, we can see that this has changed all of our data over. And with this, we can see that, you know, anything that's got a higher number is up in the green. And as it goes into lower numbers, so down at the nine, we have the red there and everything in between, which is really handy as you're kind of moving through stuff as, you know, it just makes things easier and stand out more. And this doesn't just need to be within columns. This can also work across rows, for instance, if you have your data in rows. So just to bear that in mind, and again, like I say, it just shows really easily where your data is or what your particular values are based on the rules that you set. Next part that we can look out with the format and then is if we wanted to change any of these in terms of the way that they show. So we can see now that they've just got a basic rating of 0.5. And when we click into the cell, we can see that here it shows you as a general, but we have all the options here. So we can change things into percentages and it's a, you know, different formats in terms of money and stuff, if that's what we wanted. And if we select a cell, rather than being a rating, if this was a currency, say, then we can just quickly change that into currency. And we can see that, you know, it'll put in the pound sign, it'll put in the decimal place for you. And it's really quick and easy to edit that way. And when I say you've got different options here, if that's something that you want to look at and how you want to format different cells. But we'll just leave this for now, as this is just a rating with a point in. So we don't need to do too much with that. So what we can do then is we're going to start working on formulas now. And if we were to change this, I would say that this would be the price. And as we were going to do before, we'd just change this into currency. So that these now become values. What we would potentially look to do is say, right, well, we've got the different prices here for all of our different data points. And what we would want to know for instance is how much would all of these DVD costs? So we could say, what is the value of all these DVDs? And within this, then what we can do is we could press the equal sign in this cell and you could say like 0 0.5, add 0 0.5. But you can see that this is going to be really tedious over time. And it's also going to create manual errors within that as you're pressing the decimal place and things. So we can use functions within Excel. So starting out, we can use the sub function. And when we've done this, we can press the tab and we can see now that it opens up this sub function and we get this open parentheses here. We can select the first cell within our data and press the control shift and down. 
And what that's going to do is just select all of our data for us there. And we can see now that we have this marching and little box that's appeared all the way around our data. And up here we have the colon with the first cell D2 and the final cell of D251. So once we've done this, we can close the parentheses and press enter. And we can see that we have a total now of £2,306. So we don't have to manually be entering everything. We can quickly select all of our data and it's going to show us all the way down really quickly and easily. So while we've put this value at the side here, what we also have the option to do is if we want to be really quick about doing things and you were down at the bottom of the data here, rather than going up and putting in the sum and changing all the different values, what you have the option of doing here is saying, well, on the home tab, we can go across and we now have this here and we can click onto the auto sum option here and we can see that this is automatically there and give us that same data again. So if we were to press enter at that point, we can see that it's added that in there. And as you probably see in there, you have, if you're on a Windows, you have the Alt and Equals, which is going to do the exact same thing for you, where it's just going to select it all there and add it up. So we can press that there. So that's just the shortcuts for it. But if you don't have the Windows version, then you can go up to the home and we can go across here and uh, so that's if you want to put the data underneath it but if you want to move it to the side then you're going to have to kind of manually go in and put that value at the uh, sum function there for what you need so now that we're down at the bottom here we can see what we're going to use is just quickly adding all that up so we can use the alt and equals and that's going to give us the total there that we need in terms of the value but if we want to know what the average is then we can use something very similar. So we can use the equal side as we want to work on a formula and we can type in average. And when you start to do this, you can see the on the side here, you get all of these little pop-ups for different things. So we can select the one that we want, which would be average, and just hit the tab there. Again, it'll put it in the capitals for your open premises, and now it's asking for our numbers. So we could just go up, select the first cell that we want, control, shift, and up. And then just holding the shift key here, we can just deselect that top one. So we're only getting the numbers that we want. Press enter, and now we can see that there we're getting the return of the average function for us. So we can see that the average for the DVDs or series that we have here are coming out at £9.22p. So we're looking at average as well. And when we were working up here within the AutoSum feature, we had the part as well where we could quickly go up here and if you notice as well we have the average function but one thing to bear in mind is just quickly have a look at where it is actually going to select because if you would just quickly insert that then you can see here that we're going to insert the total and the average above as well so that's going to skew your numbers a little bit so just bear that in mind and just make sure that when you use these quick functions up here that you know you've got all the right data selected for what you want it to be um, because you don't want it to be selecting anything different to what it needs to be. But that being said, then we can also look for the min and the max values within our data. So we can know what the maximum cost would be and what the minimum would be. And again, these are really simple. So we can just put in the min and we can select that, go up, select the data that we want, press the control shift and up, shift and down just to deselect that top one and press enter. So we can see that our minimum price for a DVD would be nine pound and we can work exactly the same for the max. So we can type in max, press the tab to just open that up, select there and just moving down to where we need to do. And we can see that the maximum price for our DVDs that we have here are going to be nine pound 50. And if we just want to make this stand out a little bit more, we can just hold the shift key and select all of our data and then press the control and B just to put that into ball for us there just to make it stand out a little bit more and we can see that we're starting to get a nice little bit of data here down at the bottom and it's just breaking down all of our DVD collection that we have. So while we've inserted a few different functions here if there's anything different that you wanted to insert on bit down below um, then what you could do is say you're not quite sure if Excel can do it or how to do it then if you click onto the formulas tab up at the top here, you have the insert function or you've got all of these different breakdowns here of different things. And what you can do is just click into any of them and click on insert function. 
and you have the ability to just quickly type in what you want so you could say count um you know and stuff because if you want to count all the different cells then it gives you all the different ways that you could count within excel and it gives you a little bit of a description down here so it counts the number of cells in a range that counts numbers or sorry they contain numbers so because it's just numbers then that would work for what we are wanting on that particular one there so um just have a look at them like i said it's most recently used and then it gives you some options of what to use within different categories as well just one to bear in mind there and that's it functions are really really powerful within excel so it's one to have a look at and just understand some of them a little bit more useful tools within excel then and moving away from formulas now is the all fill handle and if we were to click into this for instance here we can see that we have 188 episodes but what we can do is go down to the bottom right hand corner here and you can see when you get this little black cross here and we can pull that down and what you can see now is as you pull it down then you're going to get this 188 188 as it works its way down and if you just to pull it down normally then you can see that it adds on one every time because it thinks that it's following a specific kind of rule or specific sequence in the way that things are above and this also works in text as well so if it were to work up above we could see that it takes 25 26 to some because it's looking at the data above here and it's kind of assuming that this is what you're looking to do and you know it just makes it easy to drag things down and you can keep dragging this down as far as you want to do you have to just stop there and we can see that it just adds on and just replicates the data in what it thinks is right but if you just want to copy the data above and um, like so you can get your little black cell hold the control and you can see very slightly that a little plus just appears within the top right hand corner of that black part there and then as we drag it down it's just going to copy it down exactly as it was before and it's not going to add on or do anything different to what it was before with the autofill handle as well what you can do is move your formulas about so we can go to the bottom right hand corner here and we can drag it across and it's not going to work very well because it's not going to pick everything up there but we can see that we're just able to move these formulas over really easily and it doesn't take too much kind of aggro to move things about where you want to do because you're just able to grab onto it, drag it across to where you need to do and then it's going to take that same sort of formula. So if we just click into this one here and we can see now that it's trying to add up all of these, whether it's TV or whatever and we can see with the episodes here, it's trying to add up all this data here. So... Just bear that in mind, it makes it really easy just to be able to drag data about and use that to wherever you need to do to your advantage rather than on to replicate it across different columns or anything like that. But let's say you just quickly drag it, it'll work it across that data for you. So now we can look at sorting within Excel and what we can do is just click up here within the first part of our data and this is some of the kind of you would need to do if you're starting to work through larger data sets and you want to see things up at the top here um or if we're working on price say for instance and you have a sorting option on the home tab here and you can see you have the sort on filter or if you go across to data here um then you can see that you have the sort option here so it's z or why is the smallest there and what we can do is just if we just click on the z to a we can see that that's moved it over and it's broken the formula there just because it was initially the highest but as we move the formula now we can see that it's not able to select everything, but we can see that just by moving this, it's then been able to move all the 9 power 50s up at the top. We've then got 9 power 40s, 9 power 30s, and so on and so on. And this works in the opposite way as well. So if we just undid that and then select up here and put the lowest into the highest, again, you can see that it's just moved everything over. So we've got the 9 pounds at the top and you have the 9 pound 50s down at the bottom there. And again, we can filter this out. So there's different ways. If you just want to look at specific values, then on the data tab, you have this filter button here and you can click on that. And we can see within this now that you're going to get all these little arrows that point downwards. And when we click into this now, it will give us all the different options within that specific column. So we can either sort it by color from here. Um, so we can just say, right, we want to filter it. And we only want the ones that are in the dark green, which we know are going to be the 9 power 50. Or if you want to do it based on value, you could just deselect all and say that you want the 9 power 50. And what that does is just get rid of everything else. And it's just going to show you them specific values 
that you are looking for. So whether it's £9.50 or you want to say, right, I want all the £9 and the £9.10s, you can see that you have the ability to select just two values there and that will bring them through for you really easily and just give you that kind of specific data that you're looking for within that range. So once we've filtered here, then what we can do is just unselect this. So we can just select all again and press OK. But the last thing that I'm going to show you now is how to freeze paints because say we want to work down and we just want to kind of start working down this data here, then we lose all of what things are up at the top here. And as we move down, you might be like, oh, actually, what's this column or what does this one mean, especially in larger data sets that move over. So what we can do is up at the top here, we can just click into the top and we can go across to the view here. And what we're going to be looking for now is how we can freeze this top pane part here. And we can see that we have the option here of freeze panes and we've got the first column that we could freeze. So that will freeze all of column A if we're moving left to right quite a bit or we can move and select this top row here. You can also select the different rows that you want to do by kind of highlighting them. But for us, we can just go into this top row part here. And we can see that this line has appeared now. And what will happen now is as I move down, we can see that the top pane there doesn't move at all, but the data underneath that moves. And we can see this by the row one just staying there, but everything underneath it is actually moving along now. So as we move down, we can see that we have all these different options here. And that's just how we can quickly freeze that pane there and don't have to worry too much about, you know, having confusing data, especially if this goes into larger data sets. So hopefully this helps you a little bit and start to move into some of the more intermediate things that you can do within Excel, whether it's conditional formatting, some of the formulas, or just making your data a little bit easier to read with freezing panes and filtering data out. So hopefully it helps. Any questions, don't forget to leave them in the comments below and I will see you again soon, hopefully.